Hello, good morning, happy Tuesday, welcome back, my name is Claire, this is Purple Poppy and today we are working on the second part of let's create the ultimate grungy journal. So, um, when I came to you, I think it was last Wednesday with an impromptu shake all these bits out that I've got in here ready and waiting um, I came to you with an impromptu video where we put this together with the various layers and I showed you this fabric spine um, I will put a link in the description box if anybody hasn't seen it I'd like to go back and view it and I was having so much fun that after I turned the camera off I did carry on so as you can see I've sewn pages to nearly every spine now and I did a little scrappy pocket here with a tag and an old photo behind and some of that same fabric because I want to keep a certain amount of continuity running throughout. Uh, I did some gesso on the back of that page, it's just a coffee dyed sheet. I added in some different packing paper and then on this side I did like a grungy sewing theme because we got some pattern paper um, some stamps a little um, die silhouette you know the piece around the actual die cut some hessian um, and I love that page I just love it and that was part of the inspiration for the 52 weeks that I did the following day on Thursday got some more gesso this is an envelope I had to cut it down short as you can see here so I stitched both the top and the bottom and deal with that more paper this is the page that I did on Saturday when we talked about doing scraps so this is just part of one of the pages I created this was a free page in the Facebook group and this is one of my Tim Holtz stamps that I've just uh, used a watercolour pencil to colour in. We've got more really nice coffee dyed paper there. And then I put in a bag because I wanted to be able to put a small journal inside the bag because there's not a huge amount of pages in here. So this is just one of those sandwich bags. And I built this up with some, uh, that's the mop up napkin from when I was doing painting. There's some embossed paper here. This is one of these sheets. You know, I stamp all over them and they get a terrible mess. Well, that's a piece of the last one. And then we've got some cheesecloth and there's a bit of bubble wrap there that I've just put some ink on. Okay, and there's some string and a bit of lace. And then I did the other side with a bingo card, some ruffle, some odd little bits of ephemera, some lace. Put a key up there because I can. Did a bit of gesso on there, and then here I just did like a little flap to tuck in both sides with a little frame and a picture. So, yes, and I've left one just in case I wanted it. So, I've been naughty, I've been doing lots while you've been gone, but today I want to do another one, <clears throat> and I've got lots of bits of paper here, I've got some lace and some more of that pattern. I've got the scrappy pieces we made on Saturday. I've got some fabrics and some doilies. There's all sorts of things here. And in here I've got some bits I've been prepping. So I want a big page for this. This would be ideal, but I don't know the theme will necessarily tie in very well here. So I might not. I might use this one. Yeah, I'm going to use this one. So... In my prep bag, I have got <clears throat> some die cuts that I worked on yesterday because I had a rough idea of what it was that I wanted to do. So I've got this bouquet of die cuts here, which... I mean, these, what I basically did was I pulled out this piece. It's um, like compasses of a uh, designer pad that I had. 
and it was white on the back and I knew I would never really use this paper it's not something that w really appeals to me so I thought the brown would work very well for the die cuts and I think it has because it's brown but you can't really see the compasses and the white ones are just the backs just the backs and I used my uh, felt tips just to do the yellow centers and the green stalks so I want to put that up there um, and I did have some photos here and I've got this as a frame for the photos but look typically that is too big so that's now not necessarily going to work unless I do something clever because I could tuck it under the edge there so yeah maybe that will still work uh, I've got some extra pieces there and obviously I've got a bit of lace here so and I've got my stamps now because we've got this sort of pinky yellowy colour on this envelope the yellow of the daisy I think works okay I need to get some pink background on here so <clears throat> what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get up my glass mat like and we'll plop it down I want you to be able to see um, let's do it this way it doesn't matter for this if it's upside down really um, and I'm gonna get some of my red and I'm gonna get some brown the walnut I am, I've got this nice I'll use this one I think this will be enough that was a bit too big because it was going to overhang there so I just want to put some paper underneath that's going to protect what's underneath okay right and let's get a brush nice flat brush let's mix this up mix oh, I've got no words today goodness me mix this up a bit okay and we've got this lovely it's uh, what is this one called I think it's uh, aged mahogany okay and as you can see I'm going very rough I don't want good painting because this is all part of this grungy look that I'm trying to create here and now I'm going to bring in some of the walnut stain and I'm going to go over the top and around the edge like so okay <coughs> excuse me and then I'm just going to get a little bit going on down the bottom here almost like a very rough frame there we go so I'm going to move this out of the way let's turn this back round you can see it's come through but not too bad at all that will dry very nicely okay now I know that I want this stamp I think this is going to be a great background stamp and I want to put it up the top there and I'm going to run it off the page okay so let's get my block like so trust everybody's happy and well I haven't got any stories for you today I'm afraid it's all a little bit boring on the story front there you go 
and then I'm going to add just this top part to the bottom so like that and I don't mind if I go over my spine that's fine all right so let's pull that off close up that ink and stick that back down out of the way um, I am gonna want some of this as well I do love this stamp and I'm actually going to use my walnut stone for this because for me one of the big things about a grungy journal or any type of grunge is the layering so I want to layer as many times as I can without making a a pyramid <laughs> okay love that it's faint haven't got a problem with that okay so now if we offer our bouquet back up you see we've got some real interest going on behind that and what I'm thinking or what I was thinking let's see if it's gonna work so I'm gonna cut out this couple like So, get rid of that, cut this out very well at all, but then you all know by now what I'm like with scissors, because this is obviously a long thin picture and my frame is very square, but I'm thinking if I can get it on my frame like that, then I can put that underneath my flowers and then it's not it's not going to matter I don't think so I'm going to take a little bit off the bottom let's see a little tiny bit off the top okay I'm going to use my tacky glue mainly because I love the small nib um, I really need to get myself one of those squeegee bottles that has got the tiny nib on because also um, I could then use, oh, I'm really struggling with this this morning. I need a pin of some sort. We have glue issues, do we not? Actually, I've automatically lifted up my lace box because I know there's a pin in here, or lots of pins. But look, I can use some of that beautiful lace as well. So that was double whammy there right let's see if that's going to be better oh dear morning boo there's some kind of building work going on over the back and uh, so there's like drills and things going on which obviously she's not very happy about now I just want to trim can you see that's up the top there so I just want to trim a tiny bit off there stick that down you see now I stuck I knew this would happen stuck it on the wrong side okay there we go that's fine see and now I'm thinking if I put that there we can 
hide that gap behind them flowers and that's not going to matter at all is it yes that's going to work for me i just got to work out where i want the flowers i think we want it like that okay and then i've got this beautiful lace so I think we'll have, this is actual vintage lace, so very precious. Oh. What you been making a noise at, Bo? Are those nasty builders making a noise? Are they disturbing you? Right, and then what I'm going to do, because this is so deep, I'm going to come across... I'll give myself a spare piece there and I'm going to use this short piece like so on there yep okay but I also want something got this beautiful See, this is a part of a doily. Right, I'm going to trim that there and there. There and there. Just to get this one pa panel out. Like so. And I'm wondering if that will come down under that flower. All right, and then with my fabric that I had, where's the fabric? Got this fabric. Where are my stamps that I had out? I had that and that, which is fine. And then I've got this tea stain. I thought I had, oh. I was sure that I had a little bunny stamp. What have I done with my bunny stamp? There's my pin. Oh, I've lost my bunny stamp. Where has no I didn't get him out there he is okay so we've got our block you've seen me do these before I love to stamp on fabric so I'm just gonna make sure that's well covered okay and then I'm gonna pop him down like so take him off and then I want to put my my little common pin on there oops it's falling off for some reason okay and we want to get it so that it looks like the pin is holding the fabric okay so, I'm thinking that that can now come Let's pull those edges That can now sit underneath them all or actually now I wonder if this should go this way but then you can't see I 
Oh no, I'm going that way. Look. There we go. So, time to do some inking and then we can start gluing because I wanted, oops, before I leave you, I want to do some work on the cover. So, I'm going to ink up the edge of this frame. I've really got to get a new dobber. Keep saying that. Okay. So, glue around the edge. Across the middle. Okay. Got lace stuck to my sleeve. And that goes, I believe, about there. Okay. And this is going to, oh, should we put it into the corner like that? Make sure we've got it the right way up. Into the corner. So. Uh, for those of you that are wondering why I'm not using Fabri-Tac for this, when you can see it sitting on the edge of my table there, to be honest with you, um, there's no particular reason other than I had this, whoops, I had this in my hand and I know that this will work as well. Um, there are some times when I insist on using Fabri-Tac and that tends to generally be when I'm doing an actual cover okay so I'm gonna splodge this across there and for this I'm actually gonna use my prick stick so that down there okay where's my little fabric bunny there is my fabric bunny so i think boo it's only the postman <coughs> no mummy's doing a video it's only the postman <coughs> In case you haven't finished yet. <coughs> Boo. Come on. In case you haven't figured yet, the postman's outside. And we're going to stick Bunny on there. And I'm going to use Prit Stick for this. Okay. And I'm actually only putting glue on that like top inch because I think it would be quite nice that you can flap him up if you want to okay and then I'm going to put my bouquet there like whoops there like so now this bouquet was obviously just a pile of die cuts and I've put a little bit of string baker grey baker's twine around the stems to make it look like one of those hand tied bunches that seem to be very popular from the florist lately i know like everything else fashions change and i feel like the floristry bouquet fashion has changed as well I know definitely the last few, I say few like I have them every day, haha, uh -huh. but the last few lots of flowers I've had have been that rustic hand tied look. So we've got lots of dots around there, so hopefully that will be good. And then obviously I just stuck them together very randomly 
need to make sure this one's on that we don't cover up too much of that cross hatch and we don't want to cover up obviously granddad's face either so just press that down and then obviously we need to get the stalks which I knew I hadn't glued because I wanted to get the main body bit down first okay now just hold that for a moment while that sticks see we've got our loose bow and we've got our loose hair which I love and there's a little bit of glue needed on that leaf there there now I'm loving the look of that and I think maybe the only thing missing is our coffee cup stain so let's put that there and there okay so do a little bit more glue under there and that's it pretty slick will make it stick to the fabric there we go so that is today's page and I just think that is absolutely beautiful we've got three different types of fabric we've got more than three different types of flowers we got three types of stamps, lots of things going on. Love it. Okay, now what I'd like to do, I'm going to close that up, leave him to dry. I want to work. Oh, you see, now this is where you have to be so careful. There you go. There was obviously a little bit of glue on that. I want to work on the cover. So... I'm going to cover that up. Where's my lid for my ink? There. Okay, so let's go all the way to the front. Now, you will see there are some glue areas because I did have some pattern paper stuck on there. Some of the more eagle-eyed ones, of you might have noticed that at the weekend. Um, and I've decided I don't actually like that. So I've taken it off. You're allowed to change your mind. And what I'm going to, pardon me, what I'm going to do is I am going to make this as old and grungy as I can get it. So I'm going to stick in this giant sheet of stuck together book pages, okay? Because I do not want any of my gesso going on to the lined fabric underneath again I'm going to use gesso you don't need to use gesso you can definitely use household paint for this right and I've got a big brush big soft brush and I want to spread this around okay so to a degree I am painting it white but I'm obviously leaving areas where you can see that it's hessian okay so I've got really thick area here which is really 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 solid white okay and then I'm just fanning out from there. I'm going to do a little bit more at the top. And I'm just dry brushing across. And obviously one of the things this is going to do 
is it is really going to strengthen up this cover because once this dries it's gonna be a little bit stiffer because of it okay and I want to create some real crazy interest here so I deliberately die cut these numbers oops and I've got another flower arrangement So my numbers are four, I might actually, I don't want to stick them on just yet because I just want to make sure they are to put a date at the top here and I think I'm going to have to get a ruler and make sure they are obviously straight which I'll do in a second so that's my 1936 and then I have got this to go I don't know if I want it more on the white or on the brown yeah I think I want it on that one there I'm going to put that there okay and then I just wanted to add in a little bit of this stenciling on top of that white. So where's my brush? There's my brush. Okay. And obviously this gesso is not completely dry yet, but I haven't really got a problem with that. That's fine. You see, we just created that little bit of pattern there. And I can get a little bit more up the top here. Like so. that sexy or what so now I need to get a ruler and I need to make sure that I stick my letters on straight and then I want because I want to be able to leave this alone to dry up really nicely so when I did my die cuts I cut f oops I cut three of each number and I stuck them all together and just to give them a bit of height I just sort of do them all while I add it upside down while I've got the glue flowing as it were um, these are unbranded number dies they're just just off of eBay um, then I think you know branded and then we want a nine and this is still that um, compass 
Kajka. I had two sheets of it in a pad and I just went for it. Now I've just realised that top layer three, can you see, is um, not 100% connected to the under layers. So I'll have to deal with that. And then the six on the end just needs like that. There we go. So I'm going to turn it round a little bit just so that I can get some pressure on them make it look a little bit sort of diary like because we got a year on it okay and now we've got this one where's my brush it's going to be a bit wet now to get a smaller one I'm just wondering if I need a little bit more oh no because if i put it there it's sort of on everything isn't it look okay perfect now i'm going to use fabri-tac for this because obviously the hessian is a bit stiff and bumpy that is a form of fabric You can see I'm trying to daub everywhere. I've got a couple of really big blobs came out because I got so used to squeezing the other bottle. Oh dear, never mind. I guess because I'd rather have the excess on these book pages than splodging out underneath. Okay, so then I just pick this up. And we're going to put it, whoa, we're going to put it there. There you go. So, that is my front cover. I'm going to trim off these two pieces. I don't want to keep pulling them out because otherwise it's going to get narrower and narrower. But obviously once I sew this, they'll be sewn and they'll only be able to fray to a certain point. We've got a little bit of glue missing under this one here. There we go. So, I hope you enjoyed that. Found that a bit of fun. Gave you some ideas on where to go with your um, grungy journal. Now, obviously, I appreciate not everybody has got the dies. Um, not everybody's got the stencils. But with regard to this, there's no reason you can't fussy cut flowers from a book. You can definitely fussy cut numbers from a book. And while you may not have this stencil, you could use stamps for that. Or I have shown you before how you can um, make a stencil from your die, from the dies that you have. So maybe go that way, you know, or you can make a stamp from a die because we made up the layers of neoprene, didn't we? Um, and I think it was the lovely Cherry who suggested that to save costs, you could use children's phone, fun phone for that. So there's our cover. And I'm just going to unpeel it because obviously, you see, look, we didn't want that on the other page, did we? So I'm going to pull that out now. And I'm going to put the much smaller page in. Okay, so my undercover's still protected. So we did our cover. And we did, I don't know, what did we do? Grandma's garden is this one? As always, thank you for spending time with me. I hope you've had fun. Take care. Stay safe. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.